Good evening, folks. It's Steve KF5J. I hope everyone's having a good weekend out there so far. So today's video I want to go over is antenna uh, research that I've been doing on halfway dipole antennas. So I kind of wanted to share with you some of the uh, <clears throat> basic building elements of the dipole antenna. Uh, basically, what I want to show you is some of the uh, basic halfway dipole variations and how some of the variations in, in height and so forth can affect your uh, feed light impedance, which has a direct impact on your SWR reading. What we want to go over is a quarter wave antenna review, calculating half wave dipole, uh, monopole sequel, single frequency uh, dipole variations, uh, impedance and height considerations, radiation patterns, symmetric installations, and multi-band trap dipoles, and lastly, NVIS. In the vertical antenna, the ground plane, basically, essentially, just for a quick review, you've got a quarter wave uh, ground plane antenna. You've got a vertical radiator here. And then, of course, you've got your horizontal radiators here. All of these are quarter, quarter wavelength. A little bit more detail here. Basically, this shows you here. There's pretty much, in general, there's two configurations for the quarter wave antenna. If you have your uh, horizontal uh, radiators going this direction, 90 degrees symmetrical to the pole, you're going to have a feed point impedance of about 37 ohms. And if you have them at a slanted at a 45 degree angle, you will have roughly about uh, 50 ohms. So it's just kind of a just just a quick review. So calculating the math, how do you determine the length of a dipole? It's very simple. Uh, there is a common formula. I think everyone's familiar with this. Basically what it is, is it's 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So if you have a 14 meter, your antenna length is 33 feet, 10 meters, 16 feet, 7 meters, 65 feet. So that's how you, that's where that comes from. And that is, of course, that 468 is a half wavelength in feet with a velocity factor. Instead of meters, it's feet. Here's a little more information here. This is where that number does come from. If you're curious, 300 million meters per second times the conversion factor to feet, which is 984 million feet, uh, 250,000 feet per second divided by two. Uh, you come up with this 492 number. You have to do the uh, correction with the uh, velocity factor get you around to 467. This rounds up to 468. And then what you do is you just cancel this out and you end up with the frequency uh, 468. And then of course, this will be 28.4, for example, megahertz. So th that's where the number comes from. Here's another quick way to do the math on the, uh, the antenna on your calculator, just enter 300 million, uh, press the divide key, 28,400,000, and then press the enter key, and then you'll have your, your number of 10.56 meters. With the electrical length of a half wave, we, we have to now look at the consideration of the basic antenna. And of course, in that design, there's a consideration that needs to be considered uh, when going from a 50 ohm coax unbalanced feed line to a 70 ohm dipole which is a balanced feed line consideration has to be given to using a one-to-one -one balance so the below shows the antenna without the ballon uh, the feed the feed line impedance in this particular application at a half wave above ground is roughly about 72 to 73 ohms so that's going to end up with a 1.4 to 1 swr on your uh, on your radio height is important here an option for managing the unbalanced coax line from the radio to the balanced half wave dipole is to add a choke ballon. And of course, uh, one, one typical way to do this is wrapping 20 feet of coax uh, in your fist and secure it just below the, uh, the connection to the uh, dipole. So essentially what you're doing here is you're going from a, this is an unbalanced feed line here. And this down here is a balanced, is, a, excuse me, this is, this is the uh, balanced feed line up here. <laughs> Let me restart. This is a balanced feed line, basically, what you have. This is balanced here. And then down here, this coax is unbalanced. So that's what they're talking about. 
Another option is to install a one-to-one -one transformer ballon, which essentially uh, is the same thing as adding the choke ballon. And again, this is what happens. You've got, you know, this this antenna here is balanced. This 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 antenna is balanced, and this portion of it is unbalanced. That's what they're talking about. This transformer here provides isolation, so you don't have RF currents coming back into your uh, ham shack. This is kind of important. Uh, the height of the dipole above ground can also have an impact on the SWR reading back on your radio. So sometimes just raising or lowering uh, the dipole can have a direct impact on, it, on the SWR reading going back into your radio. So what I've shown here is in the below, the yellow dot is a quarter wave height above ground, and that has an typical impedance of 88 ohms and the green is a half wave above ground which is at 72 ohms. So one of the things that's important here is if you look at this red line right here, this red line, this red line is the means right here. So as you go from a quarter wave you're at 88 ohms here. If you go to a half wave you're down to about 73 ohms and then if you go to a, uh, after that, this this line here starts going up and down. So what happens is uh, they call this a mean. So at a, at a full wavelength, you're roughly, again, at 72 ohms. At 1.5 wavelengths, uh, you're also at 72 ohms. So that's the working average there. So ideally, that's what they call a means. This shows an example here. If you have your dipole a quarter wavelength above, you might have an impedance of 88 ohms, which would roughly give you about a 1.7 to 1 SWR. And of course, if you're at a half, uh, half wavelength, you're probably going to get about 72 ohms, which will give you an SWR reading of 1.4 to 1. So that shows you the difference of having it at a quarter wave and a half wave. So if you're not, if you're having a problem with your SWRs, just simply raise or lower the uh, the antenna. This here talks about radiation patterns. So one of the things that's important is the uh, what they call the takeoff an angle. And if you look at this graph here, the red line represents roughly about a uh, four-tenths of a wavelength, which is pretty close to a half. But your takeoff angle is roughly about 30 degrees. So that's what you're looking for because the, the lower your takeoff angle, the more it's going to reach out to the ionosphere and refract back down in, onto the Earth. So you can see some of these here. Um, these just some of the some of the radio waves they just literally they just go straight up they just you know go straight up like this what you want is you want that radio wave to propagate out to the ionosphere as far as it can so that when it comes back down you you can get the farthest dx contact on a dipole looking down uh, essentially what you have is uh, the radiation pattern so if your antenna is uh, north and south your radiation pattern will be toward the east and west if your antenna is east and west your radiation power will your radiation uh, will be north and south so that's just you know it's it's not omnidirectional like a ground plane antenna it's more uh, squished into a, a particular radiation pattern and it's called broadside to the actual antenna. So that's what they're talking about. One thing you always want to do is maintain a symmetric 90 degrees when possible and of course the half wavelength above ground. This is a typical application here. Another option is the inverted V, which is uh, when you slant the uh, radials down at a 45 degree angle. And when this happens here, you simply have your, your 45 degrees here. But notice you've also still got 90 degrees here. So I talk about the symmetrical being 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So those, those are important. And in this type of configuration here, you might get an SWR of about 1.1 to 1. Multiband uh, dipole antennas, it's the below demonstrates. 
how your take uh, you take a an antenna wire and you utilize it for two different bands for example 40 and 20 and what they do is they add these traps and essentially a trap is just a coil of wire and what that does is that allows the uh, depending on the frequency you transmit on the the frequency or the uh, signal will propagate down the wire to the appropriate length until it's resonant so for example if you're transmitting on um, 40 meter at a frequency of 7.125 your antenna length would be a total of 66 feet which is what you have here and if you transmit on um, 20 meter your antenna length would be 33 feet so in the next slide I'll show you kind of how the how these traps work so if you transmit on 40 meters it's going to use the entire antenna length of 66 feet. So you see everything in red here. It's utilizing and radiating along that entire wire, which is resident for the frequency. So you're able to, you know, get RF out of your antenna. In 20 meters, it does not utilize the entire wire. It only use, utilizes the portion in green. So you see how that works. Basically, the traps, if the frequency is correct, it will go through the traps and it will utilize the entire portion of the wire. And if it doesn't need that extra distance, it will only radiate and use just the portion that it needs. So that's what they call a multi-band uh, band dipole. And the last one is this Nivis antenna. This is essentially a uh, a design here that's uh, done by this gentleman here, Ham Radio Secrets. And what you can do here is you can look. And this is the web page. I'll put all this in the video. But essentially what this is, is this antenna is roughly only about four feet off the ground. And it's a uh, it's just a um, antenna, uh, 450 ohm. Um, feed line that they have where they tie it together on the ends and they leave it open here and by my math you roughly would get about a two 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 point two to one but uh, that may be different but anyway that's an antenna there's a little bit more detail there so with the Invis antenna, basically what happens is it just radiates uh, straight up. So what happens is when you transmit, the signal goes straight up and it comes right back down. So that's what's happening there. So anyway, that's uh, that's the video and um, hope you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, basically, the one thing just to remember is consider the height above ground uh, when adjusting your SWRs. If your SWRs, if you're having a problem with them and you've done all the cuts and everything and nothing's right, uh, just raise or lower the antenna. Uh, keep everything uh, at least a quarter wavelength, uh, half wavelength height is best. And of course, uh, keep everything symmetrical. All right, sounds good. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, 73 from KF5JUF.